and I'll introduce our speaker. In the early 1970s, a high school long distance runner with eight varsity letters entered Princeton. Eric Schmidt was aiming for a degree in architecture, perhaps influenced by the beauty of the Virginia Tech buildings in the college town where he grew up. He switched his majors from architecture to electrical engineering, led to advanced degrees at Cal Berkeley and a long career at Google where he was one of the triumvirate that transformed a Silicon Valley startup with 10,000 clicks a day into a global giant with 70,000 clicks a day. Because of his groundbreaking concepts in technology, he's always in demand, chairing the Defense Innovation Advisory Board during the last administration, a member of the President's Council of Advisors on Science and Technology in the Obama years, now heading the National Security Commission for Artificial Intelligence. He is also co-founder co of Schmidt Futures, a philanthropic initiative that bets early on exceptional people making the world better, applying science and technology thoughtfully and bringing people together across fields. This was Eric Schmidt pre-pandemic's life. What's he's been up to during the pandemic? He wrote a book in collaboration with a past Secretary of State and an MIT professor. The Age of AI will be out in September and is predicted to join his other books on the New York Times bestseller list. He created a podcast, Reimagine, engages leaders in government, business, science, and technology in conversations about the post-pandemic world. He planned a national university, the Digital Service Academy, will, will rival Stanford and MIT and train tech workers for government jobs when it gets congressional approval. He's betting on the global young, that their creativity and outside the box thinking will lead the way into uncharted futures. It is with great pleasure that we welcome Eric Schmidt to Eagle Brook to celebrate the graduation of Aiden and the class of 2021. Eric. Thank you. So, so good morning, Google. Oh, I, you gave me the wrong script. Um, okay, hang on, hang on. Just give me a minute. Um, okay, here we are. Good morning, Eagle Brook. Um, Headmaster, thank you for inviting me. Thank you for um, being here. It's sort of overwhelming for me to see something as important as education over 100 years done here and done so well. Um, to the trustees, faculty, and staff, thank you for everything that you've done to get through the terrible year of the pandemic. Um, as you heard from the earlier speakers and those, you, those of you in the, fa and the families don't know, they worked really, really hard to ki keep our kids safe and to keep the faculty and this community safe, and it worked. And they did it with typical Massachusetts cleverness. Um, I think that I can sort of speak for all the other parents, staff, and students about how happy we are to have gotten to this point safely and well graduated, so congratulations. And when I look at you all, I think this is really your moment. You worked really hard. In some cases, you did not have a choice. In some cases, you did. You made the right choices. You have my incredible congratulations, and let's just say, good job. So. I've been looking forward to the ceremony for some time. It's not because Aiden is now out there, right there, by the way, in case anyone wants to harass him. He's probably sitting in his seat, nervous about what embarrassing stories his grandfather will tell him about. Don't worry, Aiden. I'll tell them at your college graduation. <laughs> but I have been looking forward to this class because this organization, and you all believe in something that I believe in fundamentally, diversity. This is an interesting class, 22 countries, 20 states, 86 people, a diverse class of students, men and women, that matter a lot. My own view, looking at the mess that we adults have made, is that the sooner we can put you in charge, the better. And you represent what I consider to be the great future of our world. So the beauty of this cheering is it's not just here in America. When I graduated, it was sort of you know New Jersey, Connecticut, and New York with an occasional Californian. Now the whole world is congratulating you for what you have done. That is a significant accomplishment. I've also been thinking about what it was like to when I was your age. I was 14 when Apollo 11 landed on the moon. How different the world is in, in the way it was in the world that I cared about, which is digital computing. I, of course, wanted to be an astronaut like everyone, every other boy at the time. 
So when you're your age, everyone dreams big. And my message to you is I want you to do the same. Whatever it is you see as a limitation or an opportunity, I want you to go for it. But don't just say, let's make it 10% better. Say, I want to make it 10 times better. And it's the dreamers who say, I want it to be 10 times better that make it happen. So I wanted to be an astronaut. I want you to found a great company. I want you to be president of the United States or whatever country you're from, right? The important point is, and my challenge to you is stop thinking locally, think big, dream, dream big, and most importantly, bet on yourselves. When I look at the future and the problems that we're gonna face as a society globally, it's the people, the educated, driven, smart people who have the kind of values that you represent, that you've learned here under this audacious school uh, that will make a difference. Now you're about to enter the most creative and dynamic parts of the world uh, that you'll ever see, right? This is when your lives matter. This is the beginning of when you can make a change. Look at the quality of the discussion so far. It's just the beginning. You can speak, you have a voice, you can make a difference. And you're one of the best teams now, I think, to reimagine how the world should be. It becomes your generation. Now, I've been thinking a lot about my industry, um, the fields that I work in, which are basically science, engineering, and math. Some of the best thinking comes from the youngest people in the room. I'm often in a situation where you've got sort of normal executive types, my age, slightly younger, and then there's somebody who looks like a kid. They're probably just graduated from college. And I'm always floored that they're the smartest person in the room. That is your destiny. That's what is in front of you. That is soon for you. And it seems to me that you guys, I think, are in a better shape than even the preceding generations. Uh, there was a tough survey. 79% of your generation believes that the pandemic has accelerated your understanding of what you want to accomplish. So sometimes when the system crunches, when there's a crisis, when there's a, a conflict or a problem, it creates opportunities for leadership. That's you and that's now. Now, don't sit on the sidelines, do something. Now, every generation can make history and build a future that's bigger and better or in, in the world that technology that I come program it better. And there are lots and lots of statistics to say that your generation is better equipped than any before it. But this last year made the case for me. Technologies that would have taken a decade to, to take hold are now going, getting through a once in a century crisis, right? So think about what the pandemic was like in 1918, truly horrific. And now imagining telling your, grand, your grandchildren, future unborn grandchildren, what this pandemic was like. And you'll talk about sitting in your dorm, using your computer, playing games, remote learning, and all the things that got you safely through this horrific thing. So because of, you, you can basically have school and keep up with video conferencing. We have a global audience here. We have students who learned and did this whole year remotely. Wow, isn't that incredible? And you can even watch Oscars movies from the safety of your dorm room. Um, and the good thing is it's pretty much over, at least here, and it's hopefully gonna be over pretty soon everywhere else. But I would say that you've always been unprecedented, which is why you're here, and the pandemic has shaped you even more. You've always had a situation where you could communicate with everyone around the world. Um, you've grown up digitally native in a really profound way. These were hard fought battles that I and others fought for you to take advantage of. We built the platform, you need to now take advantage of it. Your vision is what will su su supplant mine and my colleagues from way back when. Um, the, the most embarrassing thing I have to tell you is that I have a PhD in this area and I'm pretty tech savvy. Um, Aiden has to show me things sometimes. <laughs> That's really humbling. Welcome to the new world. So the problems that you face may be bigger but so too is our ability to meet them, which is why it's so interesting. Now, I think we've discovered in this generation, in this pandemic, that we can overcome any challenge. The burden will be on you now, not on me anymore. I'm counting on today, on, on today's young people, that is you, I'm counting you to prove the optimist right. Frankly, and I wanna say this clearly, the sooner we can get my generation, me, out of power and put you in power, the better off as far as I'm concerned. So 
please accelerate your ascension. Now, <coughs> when I started at Google, one of our investors, a friend, told me once, and he said, he said, um, you need a coach. This is my first year at Google. This is 20 years ago. And I said, you know, his name is John. John, I'm really good. I don't need a coach. A typical Eric, arrogant term. Now, you guys are all used to having coaches, but I've been a CEO for a long time, and I wasn't a kid. And I thought my friend was wrong, so I just said no. So he looked at me, and he looked at me very carefully with a long pause, and he made me stare at him for a long pause, and he said, Eric, do tennis players have coaches? And I said, well, of course, that's a different situation. Every star needs a coach. And he got me. Using logic, I, he had tricked me, if you will, to see that my arrogance was wrong, that I needed a coach. And that coach turned out to be one of the most important people in Silicon Valley, Bill Campbell. I worked with him for 15 years. We wrote a book about him called Trillion Dollar Coach because he coached me and Steve Jobs at the same time. And his coaching was the most valuable coaching in the world by market value, if you look at the two corporations. And his guiding principle, which I'll share, share as I end here, is that the team is paramount. I had always thought, and you all probably think, that it's me, myself, and I. What can I do? How good am I? I, I want to be better than everyone else. But that's not, in fact, how success happens. Whatever the challenge is, work with your team, and then work the problem. If you've got the right team, you could overcome almost any problem. What's interesting about Bill, uh, who died, unfortunately, a few years ago from cancer, he came from the football world, which is how, you know, that's how football coaches think. But maybe you in sports already think this way. But he was magical in getting people to assemble the, the teams to solve big problems. We called him the trillion dollar coach because of that. All I want you to do now is I want you to say, what's the situation? What are the issues? What are the options? But then I want you to say, who is working on the problem? Is the right team in place? Do they have what they need? The framework that I was given changed how I dealt with disputes between the largest companies in the world. Very high stakes, and everybody ended up winning. It's deceptively simple, but it does work. So no matter what our graduates today go on to do, if you have the right team, you'll get to the right result. You've been forged, both in this school and also in the pandemic, into teams. You probably don't think that's very important. You probably think math or science or English or whatever. But in fact, it is that team behavior will have a greater impact on the scale and impact that you have on the world than anything else. So. Don't leave this teams behind. Stay in touch. Stay in touch with Eagle Brook, but more importantly, stay uh, in touch with your colleagues. Just remember those late night study se sessions, the practices, the hikes, the drama classes, the science labs, and all the friends that you may. Remember the mentors and the coaches, some of them parents and even a grandparent or two, who've watched to help you grow. When I was your age, I did not understand how many people were mentoring me. I did not understand that this person and that person, their job was to get me to the next level. You are surrounded by them here. Look at them. And for once, say thank you. I wish I had said thank you more at the time. Just remember, young people are the best drivers of positive change. Your generation has more tools and more talent than before it. You can reimagine what's possible, and with the right team, you can make it happen. I'm betting you all will do just that, and I cannot wait until you do and take over. <laughs> so to the class of 2021, congratulations, good luck, and thank you for letting me be here. It's an enormous opportunity and experience and honor for me to present to you. Thank you so very much, and congratulations, graduates. <laughs>